uh, is uh, about developing a long run uh, marginal costs for network losses. Um, when I first started out in engineering, uh, it was common to value losses simply at the cost of the fuel uh, that was put into generators. Uh, but I've since realised there's a lot more to that. And uh, this paper uh, explains a, a process of calculating the cost of losses. And it then goes on um, to talk about uh, some of the regulatory issues that, um, that are involved and are current, at least in Australia. So in working through the uh, cost uh, of losses, I'll look uh, at, at the cost of actually generating the energy. Uh, there are also costs associated with transporting energy through the network to where it's either used or lost. Um, from this, uh, there are some loss costs that have been developed that could be used for investment analysis or for um, uh, uh, guiding decisions on the purchase of uh, conductor sizes and, and transformer characteristics. And uh, lastly, I'll touch on the, the regulatory issues is item four there. Uh, this is fairly basic, uh, but to start with, uh, in working through the cost of losses, they need to be considered um, as no load losses and load losses. And the costs of these need to be separately calculated because they have uh, very, very different profiles. Uh, and associated with uh, the cost of losses, uh, there is the uh, market or energy related costs, the cost of generating the energy, uh, the costs of the network uh, in transporting that energy and distributing it. And finally, uh, there are actually incremental losses um, which take place in the network to arrive at the point of the loss or at the point at which you are considering uh, investment in the network. So, uh, of course, the shunt, shunt losses or no-load losses uh, remain constant, and uh, load losses vary approximately with the square of the uh, electrical flow or with the square of the load. Uh, this is a, uh, an illustration which is uh, peculiar to the national electricity market in Australia. It's an energy only market and um, the uh, market price uh, at the time uh, that this was prepared was capped at $10,000 per uh, megawatt hour in any half hour. Um, it had the market price on the 1st of July this year was lifted uh, to $12,500. Um, it's worth noting that uh, this is for a, a year's um, operation of the market. Uh, the regional reference price uh, is on a logarithmic scale. Um, and the market's characterised by a price which bumps along at sort of $40 to $50 for most of the time, punctuated by occasional very high price periods, uh, which generally arise uh, from uh, shortages in the capacity or the availability of generation. Uh, it is possible to... Um, get a, a reasonable correspondence between uh, the regional reference price and the demand. Um, but in order to do that, you need to use a logarithmic um, best fit line. If you attempt to use a, uh, a, an ordinary least squares regression, you end up with an extremely poor correspondence. This is the same year and uh, this was intended to illustrate the 
profiles that we'll, we'll be thinking about uh, in uh, analysing the, the cost of losses. Um, the blue trace here is the system load. Uh, this is for New South Wales. Uh, the black line is a constant one uh, megawatt hour uh, load. Uh, so that, that black line is a, equivalent to a, a constant one megawatt hour. Uh, and the red trace is the series loss, uh, which would arise from a one megawatt hour load. And you can see that because it varies with the square of the load, uh, it goes both higher and lower uh, than uh, the, the, the load profile. And on the right hand side of that chart is the corresponding load duration curve for those three profiles. At the bottom of this um, illustration is a, a table Uh, which shows what the cost of energy would be in that year for loads having those three profiles. Uh, the a shunt loss with a constant load profile would have a value over the full year of $39. Uh, the system load, $43. And the series losses, uh, $47 that's per megawatt hour. So the, there isn't, there's not actually a lot of variation for these quite dramatically different load profiles arising from the operation uh, of the, the market as it currently uh, exists in uh, Australia. Uh, this is a, a complicated overhead, and I'll I'll take I'll go through this in stages. Um, in order to work out the long run marginal cost of uh, generating load, um, it will clearly be different uh, to the the market conditions that we just talked about in the previous overhead, uh, and you would need to. Uh, consider the capital costs of the plant involved. The, um, the best available source that I have of this um, is some long run marginal cost information which was prepared by a consultant for the Australian market operator. And this information was prepared in order to enable uh, long term foreca forecasting of the market price. So in the table uh, on the left hand side of this uh, illustration are uh, in Australian dollars uh, the, the costs uh, of different types of generation and these are long run costs that include um, the, the, cost, the capital costs of the plant involved. That's this column. But as well as that, there's a, a current debate in Australia about the introduction of a carbon price, uh, which is still not resolved. Um, and the impact of a, a carbon price on the overall cost of generating energy uh, is shown in this second column. Uh, and I've worked uh, through this example both with and without um, the, um, the the cost of this this carbon price because it, it is at this stage unsettled as to what the value of it would be uh, and when it would be imposed. Now the best way uh, to develop from those basic generation costs. The best way to develop a, a, a long run forecast of the, the market and, and indeed of the cost of electrical losses 
uh, would be with market modelling that would take into account um, the, um, the potential bidding structure of the, um, the, the people that are bidding into this energy only market. Um, that is, is something that's um, beyond my ability. So what I've done as a proxy for that is to construct um, a, a, an old-fashioned uh, dispatch profile of the sort uh, which has traditionally been used by power system engineers um, since, um, since the inception of power systems. And so those costs are then uh, fitted under the load duration curve. This is the annual load duration curve. Uh, the bottom group of costs uh, are for coal. Oh, sorry, combined cycle gas turbine. Uh, then coal, which still makes up the majority of generation uh, on the eastern seaboard of Australia. Uh, the yellow is open cycle gas turbine. Uh, there's some hydro, and finally, along the top, there's wind, which of course is not dispatched. The uh, quantities of these um, forms of generation were taken from estimates by the Australian market operator so that the overall areas under that curve uh, are what is expected by the market operator. Now from that uh, I've derived a set of costs then for our different uh, profiles, the, the shunt loss, uh, the system load, and the series loss. And uh, the top row there includes a carbon price and the second row does not. Uh, again, the costs are in Australian dollars. Um, even without uh, the cost of a, a carbon price, the, uh, the cost for the shunt loss and the series loss uh, displays a much greater variation than the market price and indeed is significantly greater than the current market price. Uh, if you recall from the previous overhead, those figures were uh, $39 uh, here and uh, $47 here. So we've got a long run price for generating energy that might be consumed in shunt and series losses, which is very much more um, than the uh, cost that um, is revealed by the Australian energy market. Um, this graphic just simply summarises uh, those outcomes. Uh, for the three load profiles, the shunt loss and the series loss are the two that are of interest and the system load uh, is between them. And in each case we've got uh, the market price, the wholesale market price, um, the forecast long run cost excluding a carbon price. Uh, and then uh, the, the forecast price with a carbon price. So that's the electricity generation side of things. I wanted to turn now to the um, transmission and distribution networks. And this is a diagram which, uh, while it may have different voltages, slightly different voltage levels on, will be familiar to, I'm sure, most engineers. It shows the cascading um, of uh, customer connections and transformation points uh, through, in the case of Australia, from 500 and 330 kV at the left-hand end 
through to the low voltage level of 230 to 400 volts at the, uh, the right-hand side. And at each level uh, in the network, um, there are um, losses involved in each of those different components. The, the, uh, uh, there are series losses in the um, transmission and distribution lines. Uh, there are both series and shunt or no load losses in all of the transformation. And of course, there are customers connected at every different level uh, in the network. Um, a point to make is that a customer that uh, is connected right down at this low level of the network, uh, which may increment the losses in that part of the network, in the long run actually requires the upstream augmentation of the network all the way up. So it's appropriate uh, to consider uh, the costs of augmenting the network as well as the losses which are taking place uh, in getting um, energy down to the low voltage level. Uh, through my employment with Energy Australia, um, I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to develop this kind of diagram. Um, it's not common uh, for this level of detail <coughs> to be published um, these days. The, at least in Australia, the uh, distribution organisations have become uh, less likely to publish uh, detailed information on losses and, um, and where they're occurring. Uh, but an understanding of where the losses are taking place in the network is quite a useful thing. Energy Australia is um, the largest distribution organisation in Australia um, and it had about one and a half million customers. Uh, it, um, it has a, an overall loss which is just a little greater than 5%, it's 5.2% uh, in its distribution network. And uh, as well as that in the network, there are transmission losses, which uh, for this particular year were 1.3%, but they tend to vary a little between 1.3 and 2%, uh, depending on uh, how the network is dispatched in that particular year. Um, the uh, Australian transmission network is such that uh, there can be tidal flows in the network uh, taking place and um, things like the availability of water for hydro generation can actually cause a fairly significant variation in the generation dispatch and, and subsequently in the uh, losses. The major components of losses uh, uh, well, largely uh, the, the low voltage and distribution substations, uh, but also the high voltage network and zone substations. They're, they're all they're all sizable components. Um, the substations uh, piece of the pie includes both uh, shunt and series losses for those items of equipment. On the uh, matter of network cost allocation, um, I have developed this approach over a period of many years uh, with Energy Australia. Um, uh, many of you may be familiar with the uh, so-called method of intercepts uh, type of calculation. Um, the method of intercepts calculation allocates equal bands of cost under the load duration curve uh, to the energy so that, for example, there'll be, um, let's pick up that arrow, uh, in this area here, 
between 60 and 70 percent, there'll be a, an equal dollar cost allocated to the area here between 70 and 80 percent, and then to the area between 80 and 90 percent. That's the basis of the method of intercepts, uh, which gives a peak weighted cost so that when you uh, look at the customer's proportion of uh, peak consumption, uh, you would allocate a, a greater cost to that customer <coughs> than a customer that had a, a load that was uh, effectively flat, like our, our shunt uh, loss. Um, but the method of intercepts calculation may be appropriate in a um, in an integrated power system which involves both uh, generation and uh, network costs, but it is much less appropriate for a standalone network. And so the development uh, of this approach has involved taking the component of network cost that's associated with the long run marginal cost of the network and attributing it uh, to the top uh, portion of the load, uh, to the top 30% of ours. So the costs uh, under this load duration curve, 80% um, of the costs have been allocated in this red area uh, and the balance in the blue area. And the rationale for this is that the top, uh, it's the long run marginal cost that, um, which is calculated uh, as the forward capital expenditure divided by the uh, demand that drives that um, over a period of many years for Energy Australia that long run marginal cost was around about 80% of the average network charges. It varied up and down as the capital expenditure program changed, uh, but it was generally around that. Uh, it was a bit less than the, the, the full recovery through network charges. Uh, and it was associated, that, that's the demand related component of CapEx was associated with that top portion of the load. So using this cost allocation, which was used for years for Energy Australia's tariffs for constructing things like their time of use tariff. Uh, it provided the gradation between peak shoulder and off peak energy rates for the, for the network. Uh, using that, uh, it's then possible to work out what the network cost would be associated with loads of different profiles. Now I, I mentioned that the system load has a long run marginal cost which is around about 80% of the, um, the network charge. Um, a shunt loss uh, is less peaky and it imposes a, a lower uh, peak demand on the network and therefore a lower cost allocation, we've got 75% there. But a series loss is actually much more peaky and it imposes a much larger um, network cost. So what this uh, is attempting to do uh, is to allocate an appropriate amount of the capital expenditure program, if, if you like, to those loads of different profile, and in particular uh, to the series loss and shunt loss that's transported by the network. So when you add up each of these components, uh, and there is more detail and a table uh, in the written paper uh, that I've published that's available along with this presentation. Um, the loss costs look like this. Um, 
I went through the same exercise for a New South Wales regional distributor. Um, it was um, uh, Country Energy. Um, it's uh, it's got a, a much uh, more rural territory than Energy Australia, uh, and came up with a, a different range of costs for that distributor. Um, Probably the important thing to note is that particularly for uh, series losses, that's uh, 20 cents per kilowatt hour. That's, that's much more uh, than um, the, the or it, it is more than the retail tariff. Uh, so, in relative terms, uh, the cost of serious losses is quite high. And um, at least uh, in Australia, uh, that level of cost is not being taken into account currently in the investment decisions that the networks are making. Now, now clearly, the cost of losses uh, depends on a whole range of things, and I've listed some of them there. Uh, it depends upon the level in the network and they're, they're less clearly closer to the source, to the generation. Um, it depends on the load profile. Um, it depends on the uh, configuration of the network. We've got the metropolitan and rural distributor there. Uh, but the, I guess the, the point is that these costs worked out on a long run basis are, are much, much higher than the wholesale cost of energy um, that uh, is revealed in the, in the market price. Uh, and it, it's this level of costs that really needs to be considered in making investment decisions for the network where assets uh, are likely to last for 40 or 50 years. The market arrangements in Australia, um, I guess, are peculiar to Australia, although they were originally um, based on the, the United Kingdom market. Um, and losses are settled in the market as part of the trading arrangements. Um, loss factors um, are used at the transmission level to adjust the regional price and the price at the point of purchase. And they're used at the distribution level to adjust volumes uh, to gross up the metered volume at the customer's premises uh, for the losses between the connection point to the transmission network and to where, those, where that energy is actually consumed. So that's the way that the losses are accounted for uh, in the market. Um, and at the transmission level, um, the market effects of losses are, are actually considered in the process that the transmission businesses use to review their investments. Um, they require, those businesses are required to carry out what's called a regulatory investment test. Um, it involves a series of uh, consultations uh, where large investments are being made uh, and it requires them to factor into their analysis uh, market effects such as the cost of losses but also market benefits that might arise due to competition. There's no such uh, requirement for distribution businesses in Australia uh, to take into account COP cost of losses when they're making their investment decisions, either capital or operating uh, decisions. Um, the, 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 uh, the losses are external, if you like, to the distribution business. And there's no uh, regulatory incentive or the like uh, that, that would encourage 
uh, distributors to take into account the loss costs when making their network investments. Now, I must apologise that that dot point at the top is actually repeated on this one. I added this slide at the last minute, so we'll start from there. In uh, New South Wales in Australia, in the 1990s, our New South Wales regulator um, did attempt uh, to establish a loss incentive and it didn't work and it was abandoned. And the reason that it didn't work was primarily uh, that there is a natural variation in losses in distribution networks um, that is quite substantial and masks any overall improvement that might be made unless you're looking over an extended period of time. The uh, losses uh, in distribution networks are calculated as the, um, uh, the outputs minus the inputs effectively, uh, or sales minus purchases. Um, and the other uh, prob problem is that the sales um, are mostly metered uh, with uh, meters that are read, the uh, accumulation meters that are read uh, every two or three months. Uh, and so there's a significant accrual uh, which leads to uncertainty, especially if you have a couple of years that have got uh, different weather conditions so that the consumption is varying. Uh, it's impossible to accurately determine uh, how much of the uh, energy is consumed or lost in one year as against the next. Um, however, um, there is a relatively straightforward way in which a loss incentive uh, could be put in place, uh, and that arises from the capital and um, operating expenditure framework that the regulator uses uh, to determine the revenues for these businesses. And it could be quite simply done uh, by it, the, the regulator imposing an obligation on distributors to use a reasonable cost of losses for investment analysis. And if a distributor chose not to do that, then it would be fairly simple um, from the regulator's point of view to uh, adjust the uh, capital or operating cost, whatever it was, uh, to uh, take into account what should have been uh, a best practice analysis. So I see that as the least intrusive approach, um, given that there is already a regulatory framework with strong capital and operating expenditure incentives and uh, a system of review of past investment um, as well as future investment by the regulator, it's fairly straightforward for the regulator simply to insist that a reasonable cost for losses should be included in the analysis. And where should that, loss, that cost for losses come from? Um, the person who's best placed to do that, at least in the Australian context, is the market operator. Um, the market operator was the person that um, uh, created the uh, long-run marginal costs of generation in the first place and has access, that market operator also has access to as much network information as is required uh, to determine a long-run cost for losses. Um, this is the uh, final overhead. Um, related to this, um, uh, in Australia we have a system of minimum energy performance requirements. Uh, these apply to appliances uh, such as air conditioning and a range of household appliances, things like electric motors, and they also apply to uh, distribution transformers, and distribution transformers are the subject of a current review. Um, the 
objective of the review uh, will be to review and uh, we expect uh, to increase uh, the standards uh, that apply to uh, distribution transformers. And uh, it's fairly clear that uh, uh, the value that's placed on the, the cost of losses, which should be, in my view, a long run marginal type of cost, uh, would have a, a very uh, a very large effect, uh, if you like, on what those standards should be. So that's about about it uh, for my formal presentation. I'll be more than happy to uh, uh, to answer any questions. Thank you all very much for your attention. Excellent, Harry. Thank you very much for this uh, very interesting presentation, um, including the suggestions for um, improvement. So, um, basically, considering um, a more reasonable cost for losses. So it's a matter of um, well, explaining, as you have done, the um, all the ingredients that have to be taken into account when um, estimating the, the real cost of, of losses. Okay, good. So um, you can you can submit now your questions through the Q and A bot. So please feel free to to write there your uh, your questions, and then uh, let's um, let's go for uh, for some of them. So let me now. Uh, Munch this. So there is a first remark about the cost of generation for OCGT, opposite solvent cycle gas turbine, which, uh, according to uh, the participant, seems to be very high. Uh, if you can uh, provide uh, further explanations for that, thank you. Uh, no, I'm not able to provide an explanation for that. Uh, these costs were developed in the context of uh, a number of feasible locations uh, in Australia, and it could be that there is uh, some uh, some influence there on those costs uh, through that uh, that siting uh, uh, decision, if you like. Uh, I. Uh, I simply used uh, the costs that had been determined uh, by the uh, by our own market operator here in Australia, uh, without uh, doing a, uh, a a wide scale review of those. But I, I take the point in reviewing the work. Uh, I I will uh, also look at that aspect of it. Okay, excellent. Um, well, it's uh, it's probably the, the the right price for for your country, actually. Um, okay, so let's go for the next question. Uh, so from Roman Targos, um, Harry, to you. So let me send to participants. Do you suggest that cost of energy in capitalization formula for transformer losses should be differentiated between cost of load and cost? Of no load losses. Uh, well, yes, absolutely. Uh, it's clear that the the two costs are very different, uh, and they influence different aspects of transformer design. Of course, uh, the no load losses uh, would apply to the design of the core material, uh, and uh, the uh, series losses uh, apply to the uh, the conductor. Uh, and winding configuration. Uh, so yes, um, it, it, it is particularly important that those two aspects of transformer design be considered separately and uh, that appropriate values for the, the losses for the two components uh, be used uh, to determine the overall transformer design. Good. Um, so, next question. Um, having met 
for distribution transformer will result in a suboptimal investment strategy as it ignores other areas where the same amount would give a better return. Better consists on capitalized cost losses included or in all investment decisions. Well, I think it's rather a comment. Um, do you have anything to, to talk um, about? Uh, yes, uh, I, I'm sure that Anthony is correct. Um, uh, however, uh, the the fact of uh, having a minimum energy performance standard here uh, is it is already a fact of life, and uh, it, it's it's a direct government action that's been taken. Uh, I guess regardless of whether you would end up with a, a sub-optimal outcome, um, but it's been taken in order to ensure um, at least a a certain minimum level of performance. Um, there is also the issue that uh, for Australian distributors, um, uh, analysing the cost of losses and specifying their own distribution transformers uh, would, uh, I think, create, uh, increase manufacturing costs. Um, a minimum energy performance requirement for distribution transformers does allow a manufacturer to gear up and produce all of the transformers that he produces in the different size range uh, to one standard, uh, rather than uh, for the relatively small organisations that we have in Australia in, in world terms, uh, rather than having each distributor uh, in a position to specify their own transformers uh, with different standards. Um, th these are only distribution transformers, of course. That is, um, in the Australian context, the 11 kV or 22 kV to uh, 400 volt transformers. Uh, larger transformers um, do tend to be individually specified, uh, where the uh, economies of design, uh, the, the, there are bigger differences as a result of the, the uh, Changes in design. Good. Thank you, Harry. So we have uh, another question. Uh, what was the reason for some very low prices in slide 1.2? So let's uh, go back to such a slide. One moment, please. Oh, this is the market outcome. Um, the, it's the design of the Australian energy market that in fact allows uh, negative prices, uh, and I had to truncate them uh, in order to display on a, uh, on a logarithmic scale. Um, uh, uh, it's just the, the design of the Australian market and, and the bidding uh, strategy of generators that want to stay online uh, regardless of the output. A generator can in fact bid a negative price in order to ensure that they stay online. Um, um, it could be um, that the design of their plant uh, makes it favourable for them to do that. And just very occasionally uh, you can end up, uh, it looks like in uh, uh, around February 09 in that diagram, uh, there were a couple of negative fuel price events uh, that, as I said, I've, I've actually truncated to allow the logarithmic scale. So uh, I'd, I'd suggest that that's something that's probably just peculiar to the Australian market. Okay, okay good, Harry. I will take advantage and I will ask you a, a, a clarification on this slide 1.3. So uh, this shows the um, baseline for shunt losses uh, together mm. with system loads and series losses. And mm. then on the bottom of the slide, you uh, present the prices for shunt losses, system load, and series losses. So my mm. question is, how, do you, uh, how uh, precisely do you determine the series losses uh, price? Um. 
is simply by multiplying out um, the uh, for each hour, uh, half hour of the year, simply by multiplying out uh, a load uh, which in this instance had a, uh, a total a consumption of one megawatt hour, uh, yeah. multi multiplying uh, out the, the, the half hourly pool price for the year uh, by the, the demand that's imposed by that, that particular loss. Um, the, the system load is, is effectively the weighted average of the a half hourly pool price uh, by the load. Uh, the shunt loss is of course just the simple average of the pool price, but the series loss uh, is using that peakier load profile that, that also um, uh, is less at times than the, the full load, but multiplying it out by the pool price for each of the half hours. Okay, I see. Thank you, Harry. Okay, so let's go back to questions. Um, so, um, another question by Anthony Waltz. Um, would it be possible to have a marketing losses? For example, if a distribution and network operator puts in a trafo that saves a 100 kilowatt losses peak, and 10,000 kilowatt hours, uh, they could auction this in the market? Um, well, I think the answer is is yes, um, but uh, probably a, a more straightforward way of doing this would be to make uh, the network um, responsible for purchasing the losses. Um, so it, it, it would work. Um, there's a couple of issues with it, uh, and those issues are, uh, firstly, I, I think, I've, I hope I've adequately made the point that the current market price uh, does not reflect the value of those losses looking forward, uh, because it does not take into account um, the capital costs associated with both the uh, generation of those losses and with the network. And the other issue, um, at least in the Australian context, and I think in many others would be that the distribution networks are regulated network businesses. Um, they have a price cap um, and uh, their level of risk uh, is relatively low uh, and that's um, taken into account in determining their revenue. If you were to require network business to purchase losses, um, then that cost uh, of energy purchase would equate, in Energy Australia's uh, case, to it would be more than their biggest customer's load. So it is actually quite a substantial quantity, and it would impose a level of market risk uh, on network service providers um, that they're currently not structured or regulated uh, to be able to withstand. Uh, so uh, uh, yes, it is possible to uh, uh, to develop a, a market in the cost of losses. I think, uh, however you did it, uh, I think there would be some failing uh, that the uh, that the actual cost attributed to those losses, if, if it's based on the current market would not really value them correctly. And also you have this issue of the, the risk structure of the network businesses that are, are just not, um, uh, they're just not uh, regulated or, or structured to accommodate uh, those uh, uh, market risks. Okay, thank you, Harry. Next question. Would it be useful to have different strategies for reducing costs between regional and urban companies? What is the point that differentiates the, those companies? Length of lines, customers per transformer? Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, well, I believe they could be done with the same strategy that I've suggested as a regulatory strategy. 
Uh, certainly their cost structures differ uh, and differ very markedly, um, as I, I think I've shown. Um, the, it's the length of lines and the, the loading on those lines and um, the rural distribution organisations in New South Wales tend to use much more of what's called the high voltage. I think it may be called medium voltage. Uh, that's 1122kV uh, and very short lengths of, um, uh, of low voltage. Uh, so uh, they, they tend to have different structures and, and certainly different uh, costs. Uh, but a, a strategy that would simply require those customers to take account of the cost of losses at an appropriate value where that value would vary depending on their cost structure, uh, I believe uh, would um, uh, would resolve that matter. Okay, thank you. Next question: What, in your view, should electricity market regulations do to make investments in loss reduction attractive for utilities? Um, I'm aware of uh, different regulatory formula that have uh, tried to encourage um, investment to reduce losses. Um, these tend also, I believe, to lead to suboptimal outcomes, provided that um, an appropriate cost of losses is used for all investment analysis, uh, then the appropriate outcome should follow um, without actually requiring uh, an incentive uh, into particular classes of investment. Um, uh, provided that an overall uh, appropriate cost is attributed to losses, then um, uh, the, the distributor will, will use that cost uh, in, in investments and uh, progressively, uh, where the losses are excessive, um, progressively this will be, um, will be resolved. Um, conversely, where uh, they perhaps have been over-investing, uh, then eventually that would wash out of the system, um, you know, simply provided that uh, an appropriate cost is used uh, from the start, then the, the right outcome should flow. Thank you, Harry. Um, so next question. For clarity, the losses option puts the at the pool prices. Um, so according to Anthony, he doesn't agree with DNO, don't agree with DNO purchasing losses as costs too high. Um, for instance, EDF get paid um, one uh, so it's four billion uh, pounds um, well, to purchase losses, but can only reduce losses by a fraction. Um, I, I think Anthony's. I think Anthony's put his finger on it. The the, uh, the cost of losses in a large distribution network are enormous, uh, and and that uh, would be the same in Australia. Uh, in comparison with the other costs associated with the network. Um, I, I understand that the losses uh, might be auctioned at pool prices. Um, it still imposes, a, I think, a, a level of risk on the distribution organisation uh, in that it's actually trading in the market uh, to uh, to purchase those losses, um, uh, at least in the Australian context, the the type of regulation um, assumes that those businesses are very low risk, uh, and uh, this this is something that would require a, a, a fairly major redesign or reconsideration uh, of um, uh, of how those businesses are regulated. 
Uh, and uh, Anthony's comment about being only able to reduce his loss, losses by a fraction is, is correct. And, and not only that, it's next to impossible to measure it uh, simply because of the annual variations that you get uh, in the uh, measuring the inputs and outputs uh, to the distribution business. So next question, distributions of former losses need to be examined in terms of efficient use of transformers in addition to looking at the use of efficient transformers. Is this considered in Australia? Uh, yes, it is. Um, uh, in a, um, uh, at the time of the regulatory reset each five years they've been in Australia. Um, the regulator tends to use consultants to closely review uh, the distributor's uh, capital cost allowances uh, and uh, they also tend to be compared with peer organisations and organisations overseas uh, so that uh, there is a um, an element of ensuring that the capital investment is efficient as well as uh, the minimum energy performance requirements which look after the efficiency of the individual uh, units. Uh, look, it, it's a broad brush approach and it's probably, uh, uh, it, it's, it's probably a bit rough, I would say, uh, but um, this has been taken account of. Good. Thank you, Harry. So, um, Anthony uh, makes uh, some comments on the previous questions. So, uh, I meant that the losses from the drop fall would be sold as the equivalent as the output of a generator in the market. Um, only risk DNO would take this in paying extra for a trafo with extra reduces, uh, reduced losses. Um, okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, if that is the case, then that reduces the level of risk to the distributor, and uh, it's it's more appropriate then, or it's more consistent with the form of regulation that they are subjected to. Uh, however, uh, it does still leave the issue that I've raised unanswered, and that is that, in my view, the current market price uh, is not uh, the value of those losses. Uh, the value of losses is significantly higher than that. Uh, and um, the investment analysis should take that into account. Good. Thank you, Harry. So I think we don't have more questions yet. So um, thank you very much for the explanations. Thank you, everybody, for your participation. And definitely in touch uh, to develop this concept uh, that should lead to um, higher efficient networks and uh, more, um, let's say, reasonably considered investment decisions. So um, we provide here uh, the speaker contact, so Harry Colborn, uh, with the email, as well the uh, website of the speaker's company. Um, you will find in the uh, bottom right corner the link to today's presentation and uh, coming soon the recording of this uh, webinar. So, um, well, thank you very much everybody and uh, do not hesitate to be in touch uh, either with the speaker or with us for further development of this concept. Thank you and have a nice day today. Uh, thank you, everybody, and thank you, Fernando, especially. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye.